A network application is a software program that runs on a computer and utilizes the computer network or the internet to connect with another program running on another computer. Google Chrome, Microsoft Outlook, WhatsApp, Facebook are some examples of the network applications. Such useful network applications are the driving force behind the internet's success. It is network applications only which has made the internet an integral part of our daily activities. If you have an idea for a network application, then you will need to write a program. This program will only run on end systems, not on routers and link layer switches, since they mainly work at the network, data link and the physical layer. On the other hand, our program will be running at the application layer which is present only in the end systems. Therefore, network applications run on end systems only. As an application developer, you are developing a network application. The network architecture is fixed and consists of five layers. You do not have control over this architecture. However, you have control to decide which network application architecture to use for your network application. There are two types of network application architectures, client-server architecture and peer-to-peer -peer or P2P architecture. In client-server architecture, there is an always-on end system called server, which receives requests from many other end systems called clients. Please note that the server has a fixed IP address, say IP1. So, a client can always contact the server by sending a message to the server's IP address. If the number of clients is high, then a single server cannot handle all requests. For this reason, many servers are set up together forming a data center. For example, Google Chrome, YouTube and Amazon have several data centers located around the world. An example of network application using client-server architecture is the World Wide Web, where a web browser requests web pages from the web server. In response, web server provides web pages to the web browser. In P2P architecture, end systems communicate directly with each other without any dedicated server. The two communicating end systems in P2P architecture are called peers. Hence, the architecture is called peer-to-peer -peer architecture. Peers can be laptops, desktops, smartphones, etc. Suppose peer A initiates a request for a file and peer B shared the file with peer A. In this case, peer A is client and peer B is server. Now, when peer C requests the same file, peer A can also share the file Therefore, peer A will act as a server. It means, in P2P architecture, a peer can act both as a client and as a server. In P2P architecture, there is no dedicated server. Each peer has its own storage, processing speed, and data transfer rate. As more peers join, they bring additional storage space, processing power, and data transfer rates to the network, increasing its overall capacity and capability. So, P2P architecture is self-scalable. Network applications using peer-to-peer -peer architecture are BitTorrent, Skype, etc. As discussed, both network application architectures involve a client and a server. The system initiating the request is referred to as client while the system receiving the request is known as a server. Within the client and servers, there are network application programs that create and receive requests. It means it is a program running on both client and server which communicates with one another over a network. A running program is called a process, so we can say that it is a process which communicates with each other. In the network application World Wide Web, a web browser process in the client communicates with the web server process 
in the server. Therefore, a network application has a pair of processes running during communication. The process which initially contacts is called the client process and the process which is contacted is called the server process. A client process sends a request message to the server process. This message moves through the network to reach the server process. All messages that the client process sends into the network and the server process receives from the network move through a software interface called a socket. The socket exists between the application layer and the transport layer. It is also referred to as application programming interface or API between the network application and the network. A socket can be considered as a door of a house. Assume that you write a letter and put it in a letter box on the other side of the door. The postman will take the letter and deliver it to house B. Similarly, the sending process in the client pushes the message through its socket. Transport layer protocol, for example, TCP protocol, delivers the message to the receiving process in the server through its socket. Please note that in the internet, the receiving end system is identified by the IP address and the receiving process within the receiving end system is identified by the port number. For example, a web browser process is identified by port number 80 and a mail server process is identified by the port number 25. Also note that the application developer has full control of the socket on the application layer side. On the transport layer side of the socket, the application developer can control the transport protocol to be used. For example, TCP or UDP. Network application is then built using the services provided by the selected transport layer protocol. But how an application developer decides which transport protocol to be used for the network application? Most likely by studying the services provided by the transport layer protocols. The application layer developer picks the transport layer protocol whose services best match the network application needs. The services which transport layer protocols can offer includes reliable data transfer, throughput, timing, and security. Reliable data transfer. Before transmitting the message from the end system, it is divided into small units called packets. Packets in a computer network may get lost due to buffer overflow in a router or end systems or routers can discard the packets after some bits get corrupted. Such packet loss is not acceptable for emails, file transfer, web page transfers, financial applications, etc. Data loss in such cases can have devastating consequences. So, a transport layer protocol should be there which will provide guaranteed data delivery service. If a protocol provides a guaranteed data delivery service, it is said to provide reliable data transfer. Throughput Within a network, a network path is used by multiple processes running on multiple end systems. Consider that the network path has a bandwidth of 50 Mbps. Process 1 is sharing data at 10 Mbps. Process 2 is sharing data at 20 Mbps. And Process 3 is sharing data at 18 Mbps. So, the available bandwidth for a new process is 2 Mbps. With time, some end systems start sharing data and some end systems stop sharing data. So, the available rate for sharing data will fluctuate with time. However, some network applications need a definite data transfer rate or throughput. The transport layer protocol can provide the required throughput to many network applications. For example, to play a full HD video on YouTube, that is a video with a resolution of 1080 pixels, the required throughput is 5 Mbps. If YouTube receives a throughput less than the required rate, then YouTube videos start buffering. YouTube also uses adaptive streaming technology, which means it can adjust the video quality based on the currently available throughput. 
Network applications that need a definite throughput or data transfer rate are called bandwidth sensitive network applications. For example, YouTube, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, etc. Network applications that do not need a fixed throughput are called elastic network applications. For example, emails, file downloads, uploads, World Wide Web, etc. Transport layer protocol can also provide timing guarantees. For example, it may guarantee that every bit that the sending process pumps into the socket arrives at the receiving socket within 100 milliseconds. Such a service would be very useful in real-time network applications like internet phone calls, video conferencing, online gaming, etc. If there are delays, then the network applications will feel less realistic. For example, in WhatsApp calls, sometimes we notice a delay in audio delivery. Security Transport layer protocols, TCP and UDP do not provide any data encryption. However, TCP enhanced with SSL or Secure Sockets layer provides data encryption, data integrity and endpoint authentication. Although SSL technically resides in the application layer, but from the application developer's perspective, it is a transport protocol that provides security services. These are the general transport layer services which a computer network can provide to the network applications. The internet is one of the computer networks. The transport services which the internet provides are reliable data transfer and security. The internet has two protocols at the transport layer, TCP and UDP. TCP provides reliable data transfer. Security is provided by TCP enhanced with SSL. TCP does not provide throughput and timing guarantees. On the other hand, UDP does not provide any of these services. Still, UDP is used for network applications because it is faster than TCP. And the services which are not provided by UDP can be built in the application layer. Refer TCP IP protocol suit video for more details on TCP and UDP. Based on the services provided by the transport layer protocols on the internet, the application developers decide the transport layer protocol to use for their network application. This is the list of popular internet applications, their application layer protocols, and their underlying transport protocols. Once the required protocols are decided, the application developer can build the network application using the services it provides. So, in this video, we discussed network applications, client server and P2P architecture, processes, sockets, addressing, and transport layer services.